And so what I see around me in, in France, but in, in Europe, when I have to interact with other networks in Europe, I see Christian women very active, very dedicated to the kingdom, using their gift and their network to reach out and care for others. Um, I see them as in the book of uh, uh, Acts, as powerful witnesses of Jesus um, and throughout history, we all have also other uh, examples. Uh, in France, we have uh, the example of a very famous martyr, Blondine in Lyon, of Mary Durand, a strong Protestant resistant uh, in the Tower of Our Conscience. We have obviously internationally Mother Teresa with caring for the poor in India. And so some of uh, the women have become icons of Christian dedication to, to caring for the world, to, to put faith in action. And, and nowadays I can see uh, also some of uh, uh, this figure um, that are still inspiring and witnessing to society at large. Uh, obviously private life and the, the family and, and the, the friends um, arena is uh, also somewhere uh, where uh, women are building the kingdom of, of God, but not only. I see uh, a lot of women dedicated uh, in uh, church ministry. For instance, my sister is a pastor of a church planting in, near Paris with a very strong online and creative ministry. I see people uh, leading uh, NGOs and uh, uh, other um, uh, organization. Uh, one of my friend Anne is leading a ministry towards um, uh, prostitute men and women around Montpellier. And, and she's the leading figure of that organization. I see women engaged in business uh, as president of Advocates Friends. Uh, many, most of our members are, are women engaging in, in, in law and also in education and, and the academy. A good friend of mine, Melanie, is a high professor in the University of Toulouse uh, in uh, statistics and math, and also in politics and the media. We, we see that women are um, present. They are actors of change and transformation in, in the world. And so in a word on the how do women build the kingdom of God in Europe, I would say, um, because they are present and they have an active presence in, in the world as witness of God and living the value of the kingdom of God. They are um, so somehow uh, very um, coherent in their private life and in their public life and engagement. The second question was about the strength and the challenges that women would face historically and, and still continue to face um, to face uh, working in and for the body of Christ in Europe as of today. Um, for the historical part, I will leave that to the, the more uh, expert people. Um, I would say on the, the question of strength, and maybe as a joke, uh, my, my mother-in-law has a cup of tea with this uh, slogan on it, women power too good to waste. Um, and I think that that's true. We, women have a um, lot of energy. And so it will be so a shame to waste that for the kingdom of God. Uh, another uh, quotation is from uh, William Booth, founder of Salvation Army, uh, who said that my best men are women. Uh, I think that one of the strengths of the, the women are their dedication. Uh, they, they are uh, people who invest uh, and, and, and are really um, 100 or 200% in, in what, they, what they do, what they, they want to achieve. Um, also, one specificity might be that we, as women, are more sensitive to the, the, the person in, his, um, in a holistic view. Um, because we, are, we might be more emotional, and more um, sensitive to relationship, um, I think that we, we have this strength of seeing uh, people or issues uh, a little bit uh, further with a, with a more global um, and comprehensive uh, view. And that can truly really help in a resolution of issues and, and of conflict. Um, and I think this is really a, a strength um, that, that should be used, our, our sensitivity and our, uh, the way that we can see things, uh, the, 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 not only the tip of the iceberg uh, in, in one situation and especially in a relationship. 
Um, also, we have um, the, the chance uh, to be people of, um, as women, to be people of influence with our children and, and in ed education. I think uh, we, we are uh, privileged in, in that way, of sharing uh, love, uh, balance, uh, values, uh, the first hand to, to our children and, and also educating young people around us. Um, and we, we are, as women, are good for relationships and in action and also at networking and communication. I think, um, you know, people like to talk a lot, but also to uh, uh, share a lot. And, and that's also for the, the kingdom of God, that's really uh, an asset, uh, sharing uh, and being um, an open witness uh, from your private life to your public life um, for um, the gospel. On the part of the challenges, the first challenge I have found, and that can be a bit of sad, is still men. Men are uh, somehow a, a challenge. Um, we still have to work on the, the issue of uh, recognition of the place of women uh, in the kingdom of God, in, in the church, uh, in, in the society. And uh, so the, the first challenge would be the, the, how, we, how we deal with, with men, how men deal with us. And, and so finding the, the right uh, balance uh, in, in those uh, relationships. Um, thinking about that, I was thinking about the movement Me Too uh, and reflecting on how the kingdom of God uh, could comprehend this uh, this movement, and I, I would say that the church needs to be a safe place for women. That would be an extremely great testimony uh, for our society. The church being a safe place for women, a place where they don't need to earn a place, where they have their place from the start, um, as men and women created equal, and uh, being there to to. Um, to foster um, and to care about creation, about um, to care um, for the for, for the common good. Um, another challenge, and uh, uh, which is more internal for women, is the the feminism. The excesses of feminism. We need to be aware as Christian women that uh, feminism can also be a trap, uh, because it could lead to erasing the beauty of being a woman, the great gift of pregnancy, the great, great gift of motherhood, the great gift of sisterhood, the great gift of being uh, different and of, of having this strength, that this uh, specifics that God has given to us um, for the common good. So um, feminism can also um, kind of make us miss the point of living a full life as, as a woman and also of being always angry at not being as men. And I think that we have to live in peace with our identity. And, and so don't, don't, don't fall in that trap. Um, another excess uh, of feminism that should be avoided is to, to, to mistreat men <laughs> and, to, and to be the, what, we, what we denounced, uh, to, to be a woman of power, of domination, uh, to be authoritarian. And so that, that is really not what Christian women should, uh, should want and, and should do. So the challenges would be to find equality in our diversity, to be complementary uh, between men and women, and, and to avoid competition. Um, I, I pointed, I just point to you that there is an excellent resource that has been uh, published very recently. I have not had the time to, to read that, uh, but there is a, a new book on women and men partnering for God's work, uh, published by the World Evangelical Alliance, and they talk about uh, positive partnerships, and that's a coin word I think we, we have to think about. The other question was, what, who would be the right people and the right talent to build the kingdom of God in Europe? Uh, on the women's side, um, I would say that everybody is needed in the field. So there is no specific skills or talent that would be specifically required. 
uh, I would say that what's required what's required is uh, to be led by the Holy Spirit, to be dedicated to God, uh, to to uh, to try to be excellent in, in what you do, and to love people around you. But as one Corinthian uh, chapter twelve uh, verse seven and eleven say, we have to work for the common good. So I don't think there are specific uh, talent or people that are required. We, we as women and as uh, Christian people at large, we all have to, to be dedicated to the common good. And the last question is uh, quite uh, demanding. To what extent is the kingdom culture we have in the kingdom of God in Europe, male dominated or male driven? I must say that there is, and um, maybe if we were in a round table, we could talk about that with other women. There is a degree of misogynist attitude and thinkings in the Christian culture and that do not, not honor God. Um, men would naturally uh, choose men uh, and they would naturally trust men and sometimes blocking uh, women to access some leadership leadership positions. Uh, there are still bad jokes. There are still to some extent the idea that women will occupy the second position, the behind the scene uh, uh, position and that they would not be um, at the first front. Mm -hmm. um, they are, so they, they, there is uh, some misogynist attitude. Uh, but what I would say is that things are getting better and uh, I've seen change and probably one of the reasons of that change is uh, generation, generation change. As we see um, younger men and men who had different uh, education uh, background um, and who also have changed their way of uh, interacting in the household and, and also outside and at work, uh, we see that with the change of generation um, in, the, in the church, in, in the kingdom culture, there is also a change, a good, a positive change and less and less misogynist uh, attitude. And uh, so I think the male dominated and male driven um, uh, maybe uh, a part, uh, he's being challenged now and, and, and we, we will all work on that. It's not that we want a, a female dominated or male driven uh, a culture. We want uh, a peaceful and, and balanced uh, a culture, uh, considering men and, and women as equal, as diverse and as being uh, complementary in serving the kingdom of God. On my personal experience, I must say I have very rarely suffered from a misogynist attitude, but I think it's because I was always seen as an expert in my field, in, in the legal field, and not being a threat to other people in ministry on, or with other uh, uh, position of authority in, in the church. And in, at CNEF, we really have a, a spirit of, uh, of equality. And for instance, I can say CNEF pays the same um, uh, men and women according to their competence and skills. And there is no <laughs> discrepancy between uh, salary in, in, in that, uh, on that issue. And in our team, we really collaborate as men and women on equal footing. There is, we, we, we enjoy this, uh, uh, diversity and inequality. Um, but overall, it's true that men um, are more represented than women in the general meetings, in the official instances. And so women stand always as a minority uh, or when they, are, uh, <laughs> when they are sitting in representing position, they are the happy few. Uh, so this is a misrepresentation of the engagement and dedication of the women in the kingdom of God. And I think uh, with generation changes, with engagement of women, uh, this could uh, obviously change. So I have a, a positive uh, view on, on the future on that. Um, well, this is what I, I, I wanted to share with you. I'm open to questions. I'm not a specialist on the uh, women in the Bible, women in society. I, I wanted more to share uh, with you my, uh, my experience, uh, some of my thoughts, uh, but also encourage uh, a culture of uh, respect, understanding, and uh, equality in diversity, having the, the, the best part of uh, all of us, men and women, work together for the kingdom of God. 
So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for that, Nancy. Um, to, to continue on the same themes, but from a different angle, we're now going to invite Hannah Lord to join us. And Hannah Lord has worked as a teacher for 26 years and was raised in the German Pentecostal movement. She was very active in the leadership of Aglo International, as well as in her Pentecostal denomination. Most recently, Hannah Lohr has been involved with the Hope for Europe Network and has served as the chair for the last three years. She's married with three children and has six grandchildren. And she's going to be talking to us about the Hope for Europe conference, which occurred a couple of weeks ago. And the Hope for Europe Women in Leadership Network was established in 1992 to offer the, an international and interdenominational women's conference in Europe to learn from each other and to encourage one another. 15 of these conferences have taken place in 10 different European countries. Three of them were conferences for all the Hope for Europe networks. And in 2016, um, the Hope for Europe networks became networks of the European Evangelical Alliance. Hannah Lohr works with a team of seven ladies from six different European nations. And as the EEA Hope for Europe Women in Leadership Network Chair, She's also appointed um, as the European leader of the World Evangelical Alliance Women's Commission. So Hannelore, welcome uh, to the panel as well. And thank you for sharing with us. Thank you so much, dear Connie. And I'm privileged to just highlight some points of our last um, a Women in Leadership Conference, which was an online gathering for the first time. Um, and it, uh, I can only highlight several issues. It was really timely. The motto was windows of opportunity. Um, we had um, two evening lessons um, and we um, got translation or interpretation is the right word into five different languages. It was French, German, Russian, Spanish, and Turkish because we uh, reached out into these uh, nations and we have participants from these nations uh, nearly ongoing. Um, I would uh, say we had, uh, yes, and we had one afternoon, nine different um, uh, workshops and panels and uh, the runners this year were uh, topics which uh, strengthen women in their leadership. One topic was resilience, how to cope with difficult situation in leadership. Or another one was becoming a leader who inspires other women to lead. And the runner was as well authentic leadership. I would highlight one of these workshops, what was held by Dr. Xenia Magda. And I just saw Thomas Bucher has shown uh, her book and here it is. Um, yeah, whatever, <laughs> my screen is not so good. Um, uh, we had chosen the title for her workshop, A World Without the Power of the Curse in Genesis 3.16. Uh, this is the title of her book as well, Blessing the Curse, and under title, subtitle, A Biblical Approach for Restoring Re Relationships in the Church. Uh, Xenia addressed in her workshop the male-female relationships uh, through centuries in the Church of Jesus Christ, which is really based on the curse on Genesis 3.16, which was set, not set as a blessing to humankind. And she um, says the outcome of the blessing of this curse um, is the source of hierarchies in the Church of Jesus Christ but it is in fact a structure of this fallen world. Good to think about this, um, uh, this, uh, this sentence. Yeah, we had uh, one excellent speaker. This is Dr. Kate Coleman from the UK. She's a Baptist minister. She has written a book with a provoking title, Seven Deadly Sins for Women in Leadership. She served us already one time um, in our conference um, two years ago, and she spoke about Esther and her calling to save the Jewish people. 
through her uncle Mordecai, she found herself thrown into a position, into a role and into an influence. She didn't choose herself at all. Um, what she only had to do was to respond to a calling she didn't ask for. And Kate Coleman uh, gave us four points, which helped us very much. Her message was so well received. She said, um, uh, she mentioned that uh, God is giving us opportunities that are really you shaped. They refer to our unique gifts if we allow to apply them to God's purpose in obedience to him. And the second point, she said that God is positioning us strategically. God's plan is always a specific place. And the third point was that our opportunities are God-sized. When God asks us to do something, this is always bigger than we are. And this fourth point, Kate described that the, God, the calling from God is timely. As leaders, we are not just forged into a vacuum. We are being prepared for a concrete today opportunity and concrete tomorrow's opportunity. On the second um, um, evening, we had two younger ladies as speakers in her 30s. One was Janet Sewell from London. She serves in the team for Lausanne Europe 2021. And she talked about her journey as women from being raised in the liberal Iceland country. She went to Greece for 14 years um, and was their missionary, a cultural shock, but there she discovered her gifts. And after this, when she went back to the UK, she studied at the Oxford Center for Christian Apologetics. She is convinced if the church would allow the women to stand up and be leaders, to be builders, in different areas, the church is unleashing at least half of them. Our last speaker was Sarah Brewer, director of Revive Europe and the evangelism training coordinator for FES Europe. And she finished the online gathering. She spoke about Hannah, the mother of the prophet Samuel. Hannah stood up, brought her pain, her grief before God and God lifted up her face answered her prayers. And this changed the history of the Jewish people in a wicked and sinful time. And she encouraged us to receive this calling to stand up as women for the good of our nations. Thank you. Thank you both uh, very much for, for your interactions on this. We have, we have three minutes. And um, we don't have loads of questions, but they're brilliant, <laughs> all of them. And I'm not sure you're going to be able to answer any of them in, in three minutes, um, but, um, but why not? Let's go for it, shall we? Let's at least get to one. Um, I'll, I'll ask you the first one, either one of you can answer it. Um, I think actually these questions would be brilliant for the time of our small groups because in order to get a, a better, more well-rounded answer on any of these questions that have been asked, we'll need male and female participation because it's, it's one thing a, a group of women can get together and, and, and you know, really fix the world, um, but, but we need both sides to answer some of these questions. And so the first question um, is, is um, how, how can we inspire the church in Europe um, to inspire men to be advocates for gender equality? So we see it, we see it largely actually in the secular world, men, men are, are fighting for the equality, but how do, we, how do we get men in church also to be inspired to be advocates for gender equality? Well, I would suggest that uh, the first, uh, step would be to raise awareness uh, and to speak openly about this issue uh, as uh, in, in the chat also I saw a question about the Me Too movement and how to fight against um, abuse and harassment uh, of, of women and girls uh, inside the church. I think what one 
when uh, one way forward to be to raise awareness uh, among the church, among uh, and especially uh, towards men about the the the, the phenomenon and, and what we what we experience and what what we live. And I'm sure some of the men uh, would find uh, that cause uh, worth um, uh, working on. Uh, I, I, for instance, it, at CNEF, we're working on the question of uh, abuse, um, sexual abuse inside the church, and, and that also uh, uh, may lead to, to, to this question of the, the, the how you, you think about uh, women and, and men, uh, and what, what uh, position and authority, uh, what's, uh, what's uh, behind uh, the, the facts. So raising awareness and then finding uh, allies. And as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that uh, the new generation of, uh, of uh, men are, are very sensitive to the, the issue. And because they are also engaged in, in other business uh, activities and work, they, they, they have seen from the fact that it's better, uh, a better understanding of equality uh, is necessary. And, and also um, re, uh, an area of, uh, uh, that leads to, to more freedom, to more creativity. So showing also the goodness of uh, being equals and being working together in a healthy way, uh, as the, the book from the evangelical, um, uh, the word evangelical lines say, healthy relationship, how this can really be fruitful. And so uh, maybe we could go beyond the, the stage of, uh, well, we have to acknowledge the phenomenon and then uh, uh, obviously also have a, a phase of repentance, but also go beyond uh, and, and, and find new ways of working together in a very respectful way. So seeing that as something that will drive uh, things for the common good and not, not just the, 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 the negative side uh, of, of the phenomenon. Hannah Laura, would you like to add anything to that? Thank you very much, Nancy. Yes, I can only support this. In my denomination, uh, we were someday uh, sitting together, the leadership of uh, the movement and the woman, um, uh, and really talking everything over. It was there was an interest that uh, women were no more uh, um, ordained. It was a decision in the 17s, 70s, um, and uh, this was not kept. But then there was a sitting together. We were much praying for this uh, as a women's ministry at that time. And this was so helpful. And this is really uh, it, it, uh, a new day. There are always things to adjust uh, better and more, uh, but uh, communication is really um, a key in this. And uh, uh, also that men can really uh, bring up what they are fearing, what, what they're afraid of. Um, um, and um, yeah, communication is, is uh, a good solution, a good pathway. Uh, we're just going to close this down, if you don't mind. I'd also just like to, to put in my, my two cents worth, maybe from the boards, the board side of things and, and working now several years with the Evangelical Alliance. Um, one of the things that we talk lots about as a board is is the importance of, of conversation, but also then we've we've stolen the theme of Nike. Um, just do it. Um, conversation is brilliant, but put women on the stage, put disabled people on the stage, give give the platform, just just do it. Um, theory is wonderful, um, but but nothing is going to change until until women, minorities, and disabled people are actually seen as competent, as welcomed, uh, and as as normal. Um, in, in, any, in any of the, the roles of the church or in business or in, in any parts of culture. Um, and it's been an honor to actually work on a board um, where we are just a board. We don't look at ourselves as, oh, there's, there's the token woman or, or whatever. It's, it's just a really welcoming kind of thing. This is what we'd like to see all throughout the European Evangelical Alliance is that men, women, minorities, disabled, we all work together, not not within our little niches, but as the people of God. Distinct, as as Yemi reminded us, but but united. Thank you very much, Hannah Lord. Thank you very much, Nancy.